Good evening and welcome to the town meeting of Belgrade for the planning board. It is September 21st. It is 6.03. And uh, we're going to start by having a roll call. Um, tonight we have Richard Baker. Richard Baker. Peter Sarah Langett. Craig Alexander. Hans Rasmussen, the enforcement officer. And from the public, can you guys please introduce yourselves? Celine Richards. Kevin Dubois. Todd Rickieri. Yeah, I should start by, by letting you guys know that we'll do the roll call because our secretary looks at the video and take the minutes that way. So thank you so much. So um, let's start with a new business. And uh, the first order of business uh, today will be the application of Jordan and Celine Richards. And this is located in 66 Spalding Point Road, Map 46, Lot 18. The purpose is a shoreline zone permit that will remove seasonal cabin and build a year-round three-bedroom home. Um, Existing source disposal system type and cap, uh, capacity is a pump system, 150 tanks, and uh, which have a leach field. Present numbers of bedrooms is two. And bedrooms to be added under this application will be one. When did you purchase the uh, uh, property within the shoreline zone? It happened in April 20th of 2004, which is um, um, the after of the November 6, 18, uh, 2018, doesn't apply. Um, total of the lot area is a quarter acres. The lot area within the shoreline zone is uh, half an acre. Square footage of vegetated surface within shoreline zone, including all structures, driveways, parking, walkways, and patios is 740. Is yep. On number seven. Yes. Um, it's a quarter acre, so the lot area in the shoreline can be half acre, it must be half of a quarter. That, so my understanding would be that the amount of shoreline, of a lot area in the shoreland zone within 250 feet of lake is half of the whole lot area? Hmm. No, it's hmm. entirely. Hmm. That's the 100 feet, I think, is what they were estimating. So quarter acre, so most of it would be in all of it. All of this will show right with them. And then I'm going to pull the So we have quarter acre, too. Yes. So is it just backwards and the total area is half an acre? No. Okay. We're both are a quarter acre. Right. You guys know what was filled in there? Say again, please. Do you know why that was filled in there? Uh, On the application? Yeah. yeah. On question seven. Question seven. There was a lot of area within the shoreline zone. Oh. Based on I'm the, uh, guessing that's the setup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a quarter acre, correct? Yeah. 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 We have a quarter. We have still more than a quarter. Looking yeah. at. It's no big deal. Okay. We just did it yeah. right on when we're done. Yeah. Looking at the site plan, it looks like the property, uh, at least to the Spawning Plain Road, is uh, 
approximately 214 feet or something like that to the road itself. Mm -hmm. Do you only own to the road? Yes. Yeah. It is a quarter. It's just no between the quarter. Okay. We'll just adjust that as we go. Thank you. So um, we stop at number nine. What is the total area of clear openings of wooden vegetation is 10,000 square feet. Total number of structures on the lot is two. And site plan to scale have been um, uh, accompanied with our application. Uh, present structure square footage. It says to look at the um, attachment documentation. And so we have a sheet uh, where it says that the The existing camp is four, 439 square feet. The porch is 108. The deck is 64 and the shed is 96 square feet. And then what is proposed is 1,008 square feet for a house. Garage would be 576 feet. The deck would be 144 square feet, and the shed will be 96 square feet. <laughs> With that, I open the floor for the board to make comments. I think we already fixed uh, the number seven. The lot area within the shoreline zone will be quarter acre. We have that uh, on the application. Have this already? Yes. So, good question. The, um, the utility poles run across here, right? So mm -hmm. the utility line. So that the garage is 15 feet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no close to 15 feet, I guess. The, uh, do we know what the, you know, how far the proposed uh, garage building is going to be from the uh, power lines? Um, He's got that, that's from CMP. He's going yeah. to do the setback as he's trying to get that as far as he can from the water. Yeah. Um, and the notes here, yes, it says 15 feet from the power line. So the line that's closest to the garage is 15 feet. Then it just increasingly gets a little more. Uh, oh. Good. On the corner there, it's 15 feet here, say there. Yes. And the other side is probably about 20 feet. 20 feet, I'm guessing. Yeah. More than 15, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So the, okay. All right. Thank you. That's good. I've got some questions, Sarah. Correct. Uh, Mr. Baker. Actually, some of them, some of my earlier questions were sort of answered with the, uh, I didn't have the drawing of the new structure. Um, I wanted to make sure that uh, anything within 75 feet uh, or beyond the structure beyond 25 feet has a height of no more than 25 feet of height. Correct. Uh, and the case. Um, and then, um, I didn't have it, I didn't see any dimensions of the old structure specifically. And I, I asked that question 
when a structure is torn down and rebuilt, it has to meet the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Mm -hmm. And that structure is grandfathered as it's set. Uh, question whether a when you're moving back to the greatest practical extent, we talked about this before, that the structure has to be the existing structure, what was the size of the existing structure needs to be placed to the greatest practical extent for setback. Mm -hmm. Then when you do that, you then look at what more can I expand without going closer to the water. And from my view of the, the drawing, it looks like the house, new house is, is deeper in depth than the original camp. So I question whether that that essentially is allowing the existing structure to be built uh, plus being built closer to the water because the new structure mm -hmm. is deeper in depth. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know what, uh, put this right, I question uh, or I don't believe that we can allow the new structure to be deeper in depth than the old structure once you determine what the setback requirement is to the greatest practical extent. Um, the other thing is I, I see there's a garage and I know your husband mentioned that last time uh, that he needs a garage and, and I can understand that. Uh, when we're looking at the greatest practical extent, <clears throat> Can we consider that garage in terms of uh, greatest practical extent that this this is needed on a practical basis or whatever? Uh, therefore, the structure, uh, you know, if this if this same application was be, being presented without a garage, I'd say that the the new house. Needs to be where the, the, the garage is, the depth of the garage. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I guess the, the question is can we look at the garage uh, as we evaluate uh, taking the approach that the garage is necessary, therefore, the greatest practical extent for the new house is where it's being proposed. And that the garage uh, prevents the new house from being set back any further mm -hmm. because he needs a garage. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we don't we have provisions for handicap. We do. Uh, to to do mm -hmm. what you just said. Yeah. Well, my, I said, I was I was in the ordinance. Yeah. My thinking along along this line is if we chose to take a different approach, that the house needs to go back by the garage and we can be into uh, uh, you know, trying to think of the right word, but basically preventing someone from having a uh, necessary uh, handicap provision and, and we wouldn't win on that basis that we did. So, uh, initially, I was going to come here saying, I don't think you can permit the garage. We need to go to the Board of Appeals. But at the same time, the garage of appeals is going to be 100 feet back. Uh, yeah. And if that's the case, you wouldn't be going to the Board of Appeals for a variance because it's the garage is conforming. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm, I've changed my mind and, and feel that we can consider the garage Toward meeting the, the, the house meeting greatest practical extent. But I am concerned about the, the new house being deeper, if you will, uh, larger toward the water than what the old structure was. Yes. But, um, so, anyway, that, that, that's one of my concerns. And, uh, let's see. Is, is the new deck any, the proposed deck any deeper in terms of not width, but uh, distance, uh, um, I'd say the depth of it. It's shallower. Pardon me? It's shallower. His old deck is seven feet deep. Okay. His new one is six feet deep. Okay. All right. Um, okay. And uh, I, I guess my thought is if we approve this application and the old structures required, 
uh, is uh, is permitted. I think we should have a requirement that the existing area underneath the old camp be revegetated, uh, which you probably do that. Yeah. In the size of the shed, um, I just want to make sure when we permit something, we're not permitting, and I don't think we would be permitting uh, uh, more than a thousand square feet within 75 feet of the water. Uh, and uh, my looking at it is I don't think we would be. I, so I, the shed, what, uh, I guess the square footage of the shed is already on the application. Uh, 96 square feet. And the, the amount of the house within 75 feet of the water uh, and the shed, I don't think comes close to the thousand square feet. Anyway, so my main concern is whether we can allow the the new structure to be deeper in depth than the old structure once it's met the setback to the greatest practical extent. I think it can be we can allow wider structure, mm -hmm. but I don't think we can permit a deeper structure. Uh, I think that that was. Oh, and of course, we'll need the contractor number. That would be a condition. And let oh, you've already got it. Okay. All right. So we'll have to add that to the application. So how close are you to property lines on each side? We're 10 feet. You're already 10 feet. Can you help us um, by indicating the original dimensions of the camp, the width? And then all oh, that. I've got that here. Yeah. You are, your width is uh, 31. And the deck, including the deck, is uh, 25. You said 25? Yeah, that's including the deck. The structure itself is 18, the deck is 7. So, so um, let me let me uh, go back. I have to ask this while we are the new house. The twenty eight is the the twenty eight will be the width, and thirty six will be the depth. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, thirty three wide. Thirty three wide and twenty five feet deep. All right. And then the new one is what twenty eight feet deep. Mm -hmm. Uh, the new one is 36 deep. No, it's width, isn't it? It's width, right? It's right. It's shorter on the width that is on the depth. That's why I said that the width will be 28, isn't it? Yeah. I would agree with that. I'm looking at that right there. It's yeah, 28 deep wide and 36 deep. Yeah. Okay. Like this, the legs. Um, well, exactly, 11 feet deeper than what the old mm -hmm. structure was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, within 75 feet, way under your threshold. So, me looking at this, you have the uh, but it's 25 feet, uh, feet including the deck. The deck's right there, right? How, how deep was the deck? The whole room was seven feet. Which one is the one? So I'm looking at 25 this. including the deck. I'm looking at this print right here. Mm -hmm. The length is where? The length is where? Yeah. Okay. Um, lake is where the living room and dining room is. Yeah. That one. Um, so uh, it will help me to understand uh, the uh, dimensions of the porch and the dimensions of the deck and the sh um, and the shed that are existing. So the dimensions of the porch and the shed would be six feet in depth. 
and I think 26 or 24 feet. 24 what? 24. That's the existing one? No, no that's the proposed one. So, so they, I need the dimensions of the existing one. Seven by 14. 14 being? To the tax for 16, seven by 16. Seven by 16, and seven is the depth. That sound right to you? Yes. That is your depth. Yep. Okay, that's the deck. Now, the, the uh, porch, uh, it, I, I'm having a hard time figuring out, mm -hmm. sorry about this, uh, how the porch is attached here to, to the, uh, is the porch, what you're calling the porch is the, uh, it's enclosed. It's enclosed. It's part of the dwelling. It's part of the dwelling. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, the camp, the widest, the widest points of the camp are from the widest, the most, uh, let's say east west uh, uh, direction, actually north, it's almost north south, south. It will be 31 feet wide because there, there's a section in the front of the old camp that is narrower towards the lake. We're counting the farthest wall into closer to the one problem line to the other it will be about 31 feet wide. Is that one here? And then the depth of the camp is starting from behind the deck all the way to the back. So that point is, that 27 is including the seven feet of depth of the uh, deck. Yeah, so essentially we need to have that number from the front of the deck to the very back of the house. From the deck to the very back of the house. The huge. The original is 25 feet. 25. That's what I tried. And how close was it to the lake? And how far away from the lake is the proposed? The existing, help me out here, what are you, 15 feet from the lake? That sounds about right, but I didn't. And uh, the new one's going to be set back to the next six feet. So we're getting a lot of lot of land there. Yeah, he was trying to put the back to 100. Yeah. You know, power line stop him. So his intentions are exactly what the ordinance says. It's not possible. Yeah, so with the, so with the setback and the light on the new structure, on the proposed structure, 55 feet, 60. 60 feet. And the guys are matched on the, from side to side, to property lines. You know, for back to the lake, the new property. I think it's somewhere around. It's between 55 and 60. Yeah, I want to say it was 60 is number, and I'm not sure if that included the deck or not. Yeah, so he's got a 50 foot here. Mm -hmm. So if we're considering the old structure versus the new structure. The big deal here will be the depth. So we have to come from the front of the porch to the back of the, of the home or the camp. Yeah. And, and we're talking for the 16 camp, the depth is 25 feet. Yeah. Are we all in agreement with that? Yeah. All right. So then the new structure from the front of the deck to the back of the new home will be 28, 28 feet plus six. It will be 34. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 28 is the left. Oh, never mind, you're right. Thank you. That will be 42 versus 25. We're yeah. talking about Sorry. Yeah, my, my thinking is 17 feet or 
So we can't go any wider. So for a handicapped home, it doesn't make any, it's not very practical to have a, you know, an 18 by 28 house. Um, you know, it's, it really struggled as a practical thing because we're gaining space with letting them move it back. We're gaining a lot of space where um and elevation of the, the lot is slopes so you're getting a lot so, higher away from the water so we're gaining a lot as a town getting them away from the water yeah i agree yeah, and this practical thing that you keep bringing up i really struggle with it um, we all do that correct i really struggle with the whole you know meaning of the whole thing and how you determine that and uh, I don't know, and and in that sense, I think has moved back as practically um, as far as practical in there. And, and I understand and, what you're saying. Uh, at the same time, I think that because they have no way to go sideways. Mm -hmm. If they had a space to go sideways, then I'd understand your argument. Mm -hmm. But they have no space to go sideways. That's the other thing I uh, thought I had, and I'm not trying to sound, trying to come across as being negative. I understand exactly kind of way better. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the idea of the uh, larger house and meeting that being greatest practical extent or whatever, is that the existing camp has two bedrooms there. You know, we're, we're approving a, a third bedroom. Uh, and a, just in terms of size, increasing the size of versus what was there before. The old house camp or existing camp is grandfathered where it is. The ordinance is written such that once you tear it down, it's damaged or destroyed by more than 50%. You have to come and find it with the ordinance as if you were building it today. So, so um, I, I understand where Craig is coming from, but I also think we need to go by what the ordinance says. Well, it doesn't, doesn't, say, say, it's it's practical. Practical. Yeah. doesn't the ordinance say they can have a thousand square feet beyond 50 feet? Um, yeah, but it, it comes down to uh, what I said before, the grandfather, the, the, the existing campus grandfather where it is. Yeah. Uh, once you tear it down, you kind of lost your grandfather, and so to speak. Uh, your, your grandfather for what you had in terms of moving that back to the greatest practice. And you're not grandfather for expansion. Uh, if you can make an expansion, the, the additional expansion has to meet the uh, standard of the ordinances, which you're not making that. Well, they're not being grandfathered for the expansion because the expansion is written right in our ordinance. Right. Are you suggesting that this doesn't meet the ordinance? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. That, because uh, it's a thousand square feet bigger the than the old structure. So that when the old structure is removed, and you look at moving it back to the greatest practical extent, you get to build what you had. Right. And anything bigger than that has to meet the standard of the ordinance uh, in terms of that. Now, Mr. Baker, it's something that will help me in uh, placing an opinion here. I could, I know in the ordinance there's a clip and a portion uh, that address a situation of an elder. For a person with a disability, uh, on and how this things can work. Well, that's actually in state law. And so state. Our ordinance doesn't. If that provision is not specifically worded in the ordinance. Do you do you happen to know the state law number? Uh, right, this, if you look up handicapped accessibility, is very exact. Yeah, there's actually a provision for accessible uh, ex access. In the shoreland zone, uh, uh, I can't read it off word for word. It's been 12 years since I dealt with that provision. Um, 
But, so what what that provision allow us to do do allow us to provide to provide a structure that is okay. granting access to the uh, allows for a structure to gain access to the main structure, the camp or the house or whatever. And so if you couldn't make a setback to put up a and, and in this case here we're talking about a garage. I'm willing to say, you know, my thinking is that we could argue that the garage is necessary for access to the structure for Mr. Richard. Yes. Uh, I'm not arguing with that at all. So then then I guess the argument that I hear is that the structure needs to be certain uh, dimensions because Mr. Richard eventually end up in a, a wheelchair. If the house is too small, it's going to constrain his mobility and it was inside. He will be trapped inside the house. So um, I just cannot measure that. I cannot weigh with one way or the other going from a 31 times uh, 25 to a 42 times 28 with, I have, a, especially when we're talking about the depth going up to 42 uh, from 25, we have in the 17 feet difference there. So my own room, the old structure used to be, or is about 25 by 25. And I know how small quarters that is. On, on the first That's not feasible for handicap, but I have a question. Sure. If there was a vacant lot and it was a deeded lot and it was vacant with nothing on there, we could permit it. Correct? Um, so you're just hung up on the we couldn't, but we couldn't permit it because if it were a vacant lot, the new structure would have to be set back 100 feet from the water. No, not if it was deeded as a buildable lot. I mean, if it was always deeded as a buildable lot, wouldn't we have to grandfather it? They'd have to get a variance to build less than 100 feet from the water. They'd have to go to the Board of Appeals. We would have to deny. If you're saying you got a lot and somebody uh, wants to build at 75 feet because they can't get back any further. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that we wouldn't be able to permit that. We can only permit what the standard is in the ordinance. And they'd have to go to the Board of Appeals. And that may be a uh, a uh, variable, or they may be able to get a variance, probably could if they could meet the other standards in the ordinance uh, uh, to build on that lot. But we couldn't, we couldn't issue a permit for a new structure at 75 feet from the lake until they get a variance. Even when their power lines there. Even with the power line, uh, it could be argued. Uh, well, I don't know how much space is behind it, but if this were a vacant lot and the power line prevented them from getting, well, for the day, power line went through the middle of the property. Could argue that the new structure needs to be set back on the other side of the power line. I'm not suggesting that in this case. They don't have space, there's a separate group. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, you know, I've never been in this ground before. Uh, I, I cannot wait how the state law for Disability Act, how that will shelter this, this uh, petition. I cannot wait that. Or actually, I don't think the board can wait that. And uh, and the same thing, we are on a choke and keeping because we have a, a rule, we have a choke on on accepting the new structure being added an extra depth of seventeen feet. Would that be then? Do we wrap up this application and go to the board of appeals on it? Uh, we would have to deny it. It's, yeah. We can't just send it to the board or suggest you go to the Board of Appeals because the Board of Appeals has to have a decision of which they're uh, essentially appealing for. I, uh, I honestly, you know, I don't want to infringe in your rights to be able to do this because you have a situation with the 
um, your husband on the handicap event. So I don't know enough about that law. We actually wouldn't know enough of it, what that would cover to allow this. I can we don't I don't have the tools for it. Myself, I don't have the tools to be given. So, uh, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Can we table this application and get a hold of our lawyer and ask our lawyer, town's lawyer, what the situation is with handicap and we're already gaining all that space. Can we ask a town lawyer to I'm, chime I'm, in on this? I'm not opposed to tabling it. That if the board would like, yeah, I can put together a draft letter to the the code of the attorney, sure, listing out the issue, sure, and uh, asking him whether my point of view is correct. Whether the there's another way of looking at it, yeah, and uh, yeah, why don't we just... I, I, I personally, I'm not trying to cause you problems. Uh, um, I understand what what you mean. Rather than trying to lead the attorney, because this is the way the questions work. If everybody tries to lead the attorney into an answer, mm -hmm. just ask if we can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, Rather I, than I, trying I, to throw your, your yeah. input into it, just ask mm -hmm. if we can do it. Yeah, yeah. Rather than trying to lead him into yeah, your I, answer. I won't, I won't do that. Uh, I will. Okay. Uh, but we're, also, gonna, we're gonna have to look at it before well, you send that, it. Well, that's the, the point I was gonna bring up next. The board as a whole would look at that before it was forwarded. What this will do for you or not do for you is it'll delay the board's decision for at least for two board meeting periods because of, we'd have to approve the letter to send and then the attorney would hopefully we get a reply back within two weeks so that puts you back a month from on today yeah. Yeah. And, and you understand that we're trying to do the right thing i i understand that. we want to honor your rights and but also we want to be in compliance with the ordinance. Absolutely. Thank you. So and I think that would be the best uh, unless you're in on a various kinds of potential. No, no. If you could go sideways and then I'd say, well, let's work with that. Um, but you're right at your limit. So sideways. Yeah. Um, so I think this is your only option and we need clarification. You know, and I would, as a board member, would like that clarification so we know. I understand that. Thank okay. you. I would make a motion that we table this pending a letter to the town attorney with uh, uh, seeking input from him as to uh, what uh, the question whether this Application is uh, approvable by the board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the question. The question I'm is, sorry. Go ahead. Your, what? Your motion is no place for a question. But, yeah. but your what your consider the garage is consider, you're considering an expansion, and that would be considering not allowable. No, the, the garage is considered a necessity. The garage is, I think we're all in agreement we approve the garage. The garage yeah, it's all yeah. part of yeah. just expanding. And the, and the structure is being, I mean, I agree that the, uh, the structure, as far as the setback, uh, we'll say the, the distance on the back <laughs> side, we're not in disagreement on that. The, the question of disagreement is whether the old structure can actually be expanded such that the new structure is closer to the water than what the old structure itself would, would have been. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the, the 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 old structure used to be about 25 feet in deep, and now it's going to be 42. And it, the, re the reasoning behind it is that we, in order to allow the, the occupancy of a handicapped person, not to be trapped inside his own new home, that you have to be that much bigger. I don't know how to judge that. Yeah. And and uh, under uh, acts of law of the state, you guys are entitled to to uh, uh, certain rights. 
So I, I cannot, we cannot, I don't have the ability to judge that. I think our lawyers will be able to weigh in. Okay. All right. And what I will say in the letter is the applicant is proposing to do this. Do you believe that is uh, allowable? Can they can the board approve it? And with the um, garage, we've already accepted the garage mm -hmm. as a necessity. Mm -hmm. We all, I think we all agree on that. Are we? Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking. Yeah. yeah. Right. Trying to find them. So we had a motion and a second. Should we vote? Sure, yeah. And uh, you voted tonight because you're you're part of the five time. Yeah, uh, all yes, right. Yes. So, Mr. Baker. Yes. Mrs. Akar. Yes. Mr. Sturgeon. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And so I will vote. I would yes. So it's five in favor of tabling this uh, application with the con concept of uh, sending questions to a lawyer, and none of us. So I think we we'll hear from uh, hands. Um, when do we own the deck again? Maybe we about a month. Well, we need an answer from our lawyer first. Yeah. So probably in two meetings. Like we attend every meeting we went to part of the time. So we could attend in two weeks from now as well as oh, yeah. four weeks from now. Any meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'll be part of that discussion. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you can be part of the discussion on the letter that goes to our attorney, town attorney. Okay. You know, Hans, if, if we do this and you get the letter back from the attorney, say a week before the planning board meeting, can you send or would you send a copy of that to Mrs. Richard? So yeah. that be, be what the attorney's been before the kids here. Absolutely. Okay. Hopefully Jordan will be able to attend. Unfortunately, um, he was admitted to the uh... Oh, he was in, admitted to the hospital. So, uh, so sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And so and this is our son-in-law, so that's why he's here. You're being your son-in-law. You're the contractor. Yes. Uh, yep. Walk out with you. So I look, I look forward to working with you guys. Mm -hmm. It was nice to meet all of you as well. Thank you. Good luck in the house. How soon is Kelly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, um, Good luck with that. Have some well problems, so we're dealing with that. Uh, oh. Thank you. Thank you. So our next item in the agenda is the application from Carla Kerr Sorry. Yeah. All right. And the location of this application will be on 31st Drive. This is in map 45, lot 13. And the name of the lake is going to be on the Salmon Lake. Uh, the current use of the property is residential. Uh, the proposed construction or change in use is replace existing storage shed A by 10 and 2 inches with a shed that is uh, 10 by 18. Also built uh, a 10 by 17 mud room and a 10 by 30 pavers walkway. Uh, the assistant storage disposal system type and capacity um, uh, that was in blank, so I guess we don't we don't have a set uh, source system. There's not a septic in there, huh? There's a septic system, yes. That was left in blank. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to it because I didn't have access to it. We have a separate, separate water thing right here. Yeah. And, uh, so I will, I will place in there C attachment. Yeah. 
And the system is in place right now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So present number of rooms is one. There rooms to be added on this application is zero. It's just a mudroom. Yeah, just a mudroom. It actually has a loft with a bedroom in the loft. So additions will be zero then. Huh? We have to add that to the application too. When did you purchase the property within the shoreland zone? It was uh, August 2023. So that's after the deadline of uh, November 6, 2018. And there should be a copy of the septic system in inspection here. I thought I saw that here. Yeah. You know, I probably don't know exactly when the septic system was put in. I, I know the application here showed it was 2000, only, I thought it was like 2022. But... I think it was 2018. Um, it, it just. Before my purchase, it was 2018 in my wallet. So, the date on the signature of the applicant on the subwater is the 17th. So it was probably installed, I mean, 2017. So it was probably installed the eighth a year later. And so pretty close. So 18, is what she's saying. Is that accepted? Yeah. yeah. Richard signed off the June 22. 22? Yep. So is that one was put in on us, you know? Or that's, one case? Yeah, that's he signed off on it. So Richard had to put eyes on it. So that would be during the installation. Yeah. If it was built put in in 22, uh, I, I guess I'm, I question whether we need to have an inspection a year later of a system. Uh, 23 now. Three year window. No. Is there? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't feel like I need an effect that occurring is that good to me. Yeah. They're not even adding a legal. There's I, no bedrooms being added or anything. Accepted to that uh, uh, system in the ground one year. Uh, no, I think it's for all systems that are three years older. We need to inspect them. So two years, years or older? Yeah, if it's less than three years, this is always required. Okay. Right, but then on that, uh, a bedroom, I think, right? No, 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 no it's just something like that. What, yeah. what the, the provision in the law is here for if you have an older system, if when a transfer property is transferred to somebody else, they want to make sure that that system is in fact working here. Yeah, right? but you own that, right? Case where the system is working. People living in it just before we have it. So, 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 so design is a Three, three bedroom design, mm -hmm. and there's only one bedroom. So there's a change of hands here. That should should they check it again? No, no. Okay. So then the total area is one point six acres. Correct. And the lot area within the shoreline. Uh, zone is 25,000 square feet. Square footage of unvegetated surface within the shoreland zone include all structures, driveways, parkings, walkways, and parties is 720 square feet. Uh, what is the total area of clearing openings of woody vegetation square feet is 15,000 square feet. The total number of structures on the lot is two. And we have a site plan of that. And present structure square footage is 544 square feet plus 180 square feet of deck which will add up to 724 square feet total. That is the present structure. The proposed structure square footage 
is going to be 180. I don't get any. Yeah, no, they're adding the same size to the back, 18 by 10. So that's 180 square feet mudroom in the back of the house. Okay, so what's so that? The total square foot is going to be, what, 904? So it's 200. Yeah, they have written like 180 times 0.09. That's for the cost of the permit. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's the price of the Nine cents a square foot. Oh, so I had to pay sixteen dollars. I'm glad you wanted to clarify that. So, so just th have to fill that in. Plus twenty five yeah. short so they paid forty one twenty to sit in this room. So the the proposed structure square footage is going to be uh seven twenty four plus one eighty, which is nine hundred and four. Yeah. Maybe Mrs. Carey can. Do that on the application and make it clear. Initial the and Hans can do that on the original or well, proposed structure square foot is 180. That's what's proposed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just basically cross out the uh, 09 1620. Just one more because we're all confused about it. <laughs> So, uh, proposed is just what's going to be added, you know, the total of it. Proposed is being added. Thank you. So, with that, I will open the floor for discussion. All right. Question You don't have a three dimensional drawing or skip. Uh, going the height of the structure. The uh, last you know what? The last page should have a side view. Then uh, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, must have been added since the email went out. It was. Yeah, that was a little bit late coming. Yeah, it's not going to be falling right now. Uh, but uh, I guess what we want to need is the height of the from the roof, is it? What is it? What is the height from the roof? Eight foot wall, yeah, yeah. So then there's an eight foot wall, but what is the, the total to be a uh, uh, a frame? Doesn't matter, it's existing. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, 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 I have one other question. I think it was one, but uh, the third 10 by 30 foot pavers are they 10 by 30 inch pavers? Uh, I, I'm having a hard time understanding where and what the pavers would go. We would connect from the existing driveway to the new addition as a walkway. It's just like a walkway of papers from the with the driveway ends. Driveway to the structure. Yes. And that is 10 by 10 by 30. Is, is it gonna be 10 feet wide? It doesn't. I just kind of came up with that as a thing because oh, I guess I didn't think of it when I put it down on paper. But if it's allowable, like you get a 10 by 30 foot area um, thinking structure, so to speak, or to say walkway. 
Mm -hmm. Those are masters and fellas. Yes. I think the new and proposed addition is right at the 100 foot marks. The walkway would be from the 100 foot mark back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's case is probably not a good issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're looking at the site drawing, it looks like it's 40 feet from the water, and the new structure is going to be 30 feet, six inches. With I think that's the existing is 40 feet in front of So, the question your pavers are going to go from your back door to the fence. To the driveway. That's, yes. a, that's the 100 foot mark. Yes, yes. So, from basically 75 to 100. Yep. You're going to have this pavers, which is going to be like a driveway. Yes. So, the pavers walkway is basically. Because now they're parking behind the 100 foot line and walking everything in, especially like doing construction, they're backing over the grass. The pavers is going to be hard surface that they can drive and right up to the house. Can be used as driveway area? Probably, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm still trying to get a grasp from that far back. So we got is the existing camp 36, 30 feet, six inches, or is the whole thing 30 with the, the additional 10 feet? Right now the camp is 40 feet, 30 feet, six inches. Yeah, but how big's the camp? We got the 40 feet. That's to the deck, right? Yes. Okay. How long is the camp going? Um, it should be on there. I had it. 20. It says 30 feet, 6 inches. Yeah. Um, where That's is the, that? It's um, from the front of the deck? From the front of the camp, not the deck. You know what? So we're just trying to determine where the back is. This is what we're trying to get. Yeah. At. Well, like I said, the, the back. Oh, oh. I wait to the hundred foot mark with like thirty feet, so it's got to be it's behind the hundred foot mark. But the new addition will make it right about half the hundred foot mark. Do you know how how deep is the deck? Yeah, the existing house is thirty foot six inches. Yeah. So the deck is like ten feet. And that's and down, the, that's 40 so feet. Feet. We're 80 and a half feet. 10 more feet off the back, you're at 90 and a half. Plus the overhang. 91, 92. So even just that little bit will still keep us under the square footage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I might have, regardless of the numbers, being thrown around right now. Um, the, the road and driveway standard says road and driveway shall be set back 100 feet from high water aren't fine. However, it does say if no other reasonable alternative exists, the road and or driveway setback shall be no less than 50 feet. Upon clear showing, uh, showing by the applicant that appropriate techniques will be used to prevent sedimentation of the water. Body. So, um, the existing driveway is back and they want to have access to the house. Uh, I think we could permit a driveway to the 50 foot line to get to the house. Okay. Well, so I think what it's going to be like at 90, like 94, 96 feet. Well, this uh, picture here shows the back of the house. Mm -hmm. It's taken from approximately where the parking area is. And uh, as you're looking at this to the left is a retention pond. 
because there's a lot of water runs right down the road into their backyard. And they've created a uh, <coughs> gully and a retention pond to capture some of that water. So them periodically, especially this wet season we had, driving to the back of the house with supplies, um, it is disturbing the soil. Mm. So your runoff, we'll take that the, on pavers, the, yeah. the pavers gonna protect the soil. And as you said, sedimentation, mm -hmm. the pavers will avoid yeah. sediments from pooling and running off. Now it's that. The concept of an impermeable surface is, doesn't come here. Well, I know. Well, Rick well, was, it's beyond, like most grass, I'll be honest, so we're like a few feet, but it's more than 100 feet. Okay. So most of it's beyond 100 feet. So I, what little bits within 100 feet isn't going to set her over the amount, is it? I struggle with that. I, I really. They know where to fit it in, and that will be the case. I mean, you should stop at six feet from the from the addition and went with a four foot walkway. Yeah, yeah. And then should totally be yeah. instead of full pavers, just do a little walkway, and then the full pavers once you get beyond it. The hundred foot mark. Yeah. yeah. That, that would come on your six foot sure. cover. Mm -hmm. You come on your six foot wide path. Well, she has it as 10 feet. So uh, right now she's at what? How many square feet are you at total? So 180. So you're at 900. She has plenty of square footage. I yeah. have to go right to the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Want to check? Because right now you're at a 904 square feet, and what she have, a thousand square feet? Yeah. 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 With a 75 to 100. Mm -hmm. So if she goes four by 10, that's 40 feet we're talking. Mm -hmm. Because then after that, she's beyond 100 feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still inside. Yeah. Still inside. Still under the thousand yeah. square yeah. feet. Okay. The uh, curiosity we had in your picture is an area with silk fence and and uh, it has nothing to do with your application, your proposed building. But I was wondering yeah. what was happening that you needed the uh, silk fence and straw. Did you basically revegetate an area? We did revegetate an area because we had the earth stones there and we removed them and we reseeded them. Mm -hmm. And you just make it by point. <laughs> there we go. So the deck doesn't count for that. The deck, yeah, yeah. The deck's at 180 square feet with the application. Yeah, that's with, with the deck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Never mind. Yeah, and there, none of this involves any tree removal. There are um, more trees well, I spoke with Hans about. But yeah. that's separate from this project. Pardon, pardon. Yeah. That's separate from the project. Yeah. She's got some dead, you can see dead the one trees. in the picture here. Yeah, there's nothing that has to be removed to do this addition or the walkway. Yeah. My my concern about this the 10 foot wide paver thing is if it's a driveway, driveways are considered structure like. The house and it specifically says driveways are going to be 100 foot back. Yeah. So, Craig's suggestion of having your driveway back with, from the 100 foot mark to the house, you make it the narrow footpath, not the, that would be, a full driveway. And we could use the stone to go between the you know, driveway and the new addition. Just put yeah. a stone. But yeah. not 10 yeah. more wide. So we can use the paper, but not 10 more wide. It appears to be a driveway 
You could have caught on it. Uh, the the family at 100 foot setback yeah. the, from there to the house would be a six foot yeah. pathway. Yeah. Okay, so it's a six foot pathway. Yeah, and you can use your pavers, so you don't have to change. You can still use the yeah. yeah. Okay. Why, here comes census, huh? So, um, uh, within the application complete with all those, cha those changes. Oh. Then should we go to uh, the uh, finding of fa facts and conclusion of law? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Baker? I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, we should, should we go now uh, to the conclusion? I'm, I'm, I'm done my question. Sure. Uh, so we need the application complete. Yes. Okay. So we should go with the final facts and conclusion law. So um, this case. <laughs> 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 Okay. How many people go up there? <laughs> <laughs> Young lady, no. <laughs> we will, will we raise that from the video, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the video's not working. We're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we didn't record anything? No. Oh, we're recording audio. Oh, the video wasn't no. there. Oh, okay, great. So <laughs> you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> so uh we will go now through this takes some time right so bear with us is a lot that uh 15 to 20 minutes go through this so we're going to go to the findings of fact of conclusion of law from the Belgrade planning board uh, the application is for a shoreline permit. The applicant name is Carla Casey. The, app the application address is 31 Shed Drive, map 45, lot 15. Finding of facts. The applicants on date applied for the application permit for additional mudroom uh, to the camp that with 10 by 30 paver walkway. But we're changing that, don't we? Well, we're doing that with conditions. With conditions, okay, great. The application was presented to the planning board on 9-21-2023, and the finding of facts and conclusion of law were developed in conjunction, conjunction consideration of the permit application. Conclusions of law. Based upon the application's materials, testimony, statements, evidence, documents and other materials submitted to it. And the above finding of facts, the Belgrade Planning Board finds that the project is permitted for use on the section table one in the ordinance, section 14, table one in the ordinance, and further makes the following conclusions based on the applicable provisions in section 16D of the ordinance will maintain safe and healthy conditions. The board found this standard was approved. Uh, the standard was not, was met under, we have a statement for that, the, the um, evidence, the provided evidence. The public record. Uh, the public record. The mission was the public record. Of the public record. The public record and submissions, which we're going to uh, abbreviate as PRS. So we're going to vote. So we think that the standard was met. Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Sakara. Yes. Mr. Surgeon. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And so I'm going to vote yes, it's five in favor, none opposed. Will not result in water pollution, erosion, sedimentation to service waters. The board found the standard was met 
based on PRS. And we will vote. Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Zaccaro. Yes. Mr. Sargent. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Ms. Sarah Langer also vote yes. It's five in favor, not opposed. Uh, will adequately provide for disposal of all wastewater. The board found the standard was met based on PRRS. And we will vote Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Sakara. Yes. Mr. Surgeon. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Ms. Erlinger vote yes. Was five in favor, not opposed. Will not have an adverse impact on spawning grounds, fish, aquatic life, bird, bird or other wildlife habitat. The board found the standard was met based on PRRS. And we vote Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Sakara. Yes. Mr. Surgeon. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Sarah Langet Boyd. Yes. So five in favor, non opposed. We'll conserve shore cover and visual as well as actual points of access to inland waters. The board found the standard was met based on PRS. And we vote Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Sakara. Yes. Mr. Surgeon. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Sarah Langett vote yes, five in favor, no opposed. We'll protect archaeological and, his and historic resources as designated in the comprehensive plan. The board found this was met based on PRS. And we vote Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Sakaro. Yes. Mr. Sargent. Yeah, yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Mr. Langer vote yes to so five in favor, non opposed. Will avoid problems associated with floodplains development and use. The board found this standard was met based on PRS. And we vote Mr. Baker, yes. Mr. Sakara, yes. Mr. Surgeon, yes. Mr. Alexander, yes. and Sarah Langet uh, vote yes, and it's five in favor, not opposed. Is in conformance with the provisions of Section 15 line use standards. And there's many of them that we're going to read here and decide on them if they are applicable or not first and then we'll vote at the end. Minimum law standard, that's applicable. Yeah. Uh, principal and accessory structures, yeah. that's applicable. Um, campgrounds, NA. Individual private campsites, yeah. NA. Commercial and industrial uses, NA. Parking areas, NA. Yeah. That we have to go. Uh, so parking areas are applicable. Mm -hmm. Roads and driveways. You say roads and driveways? Roads and driveways. What's the other one? Parking lot. Parking yeah, areas. Oh, what about Put NA for the yeah. first one and roads and driveways for the second. Okay. <laughs> so parking areas are NA and roads and drivers is applicable. Correction to the record. All right. All right. So signs, NA. Stormwater runoff, applicable. Yes. Septic waste disposal system, applicable. Yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, nothing it's being proposed here. That we're okay, so NA, it's nothing proposed. <clears throat> Essential services. NA. Mineral exploration and attraction. You got gold there? Pardon? You got gold? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> NA. Agriculture. NA. Mm -hmm. Timber harvesting and land management roads. NA. Clearing removal of vegetation or activities other than timber harvesting. NA. Hazard trees, storm damaged trees, and dead tree removal. NA. 
Exception to clearing and vegetation removal requirement, NA. Vegetation requirements, NA. Erosion and sedimentation control. That's applicable. Yeah. We actually had a drip line, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, it's kind oh, of like no excavation. Yeah. Yeah, there's no excavation. There is a new roofing system that uh, could affect erosion. So, so the, that's it, a matter of using stormwater, you know, uh, great. Yeah. Put it on. Yeah. So applicable. Yeah. yeah it's, okay. It's marginal. Marginal. Okay. Shoreline stabilization. Anyhow. Soils. Anyhow. Water quality. Anyhow. Historical and archaeological sites. Anyhow. Resource protection. And then, so now we have that the standards that are, are going to be met based on the evidence and record in, are the, the following. Minimum lot uh, standards, principal accessory structures, uh, roads and driveways, stormwater runoff, uh, erosion and sedimentation control, and that will be it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, bo the board found that these standards were met based on uh, evidence and record and, and um, evidence and record. So we are voting. Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Shakara. Yes. Mr. Surgeon. Oh, uh, yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Mr. Ange will vote yes. So it's five in favor, none opposed. All right. Conditions of approval needed to meet required uh, Belgrade SLZ ordinance findings in section 16D. So we have as a, as a um, standard condition all the time that uh, managed stormwater runoff from new and expanded structures. And you have that those drip lines you're gonna do around the, the camp. Yes. In accordance with section 15I, we have to read this for the public. Of the Belgrade Shore Zoning Ordinance and Main Department of Environmental Protection, the EP, best man management practices as outlined in the conservation practice for homeowner, uh, homeowners publication. Don't we have a, a link in our website for this? So, so if, if you would like to look into that, we have, I think we have a link, link in our in town website. Such measures are to be put in place prior to building use. Know that this is a, as a standing condition that applies to all permits unless deemed unnecessary by the planning board based on a rational. We don't. So, um, So we, we don't find that unnecessary, it's necessary. So we don't need to be rational. Any other conditions of approval? Uh, we have things. One, to... one thing I'd bring up, Sarah, in, in the past we voted on all those uh, 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 standards uh, thing as uh, separately. Uh, we just vote on them as a as a blob of things this time. So on we go line by line and on that um, uh, item eight, we agree that we just vote it as a lump okay. instead of going one by one. And so we just just because of the fine with me as long as it's legal. Uh, but um, because it's one item A. That would be worth it looking into it, but because we is one question that covered all those items. If we review each item and we know which ones are applicable, which ones are not, and then we lump some the applicable and read what we're going to vote on, okay. it should be fine. I, I, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, it's a, a day of time and we know what we're 
the eight items or whatever they were we voted on. Yeah. Okay. Um, you are comfortable with that? I'm, I'm okay with it. Good. So um, then uh, do we have any other condition yes. of approval? Okay. I, my condition of approval was that we approved the driveway as a 10 by 30 foot paver uh, structure, if you will, uh, down to the 100 foot line, this 100 foot setback line. And from the 100 setback line, foot setback line to the uh, house or the entryway, the, the mudroom, which we just approved, it would be six feet wide from the 100 foot line to the structure. Okay. So can you repeat that again slowly? So um, dry, driveway is approved uh, with the following dimensions. Do we, can we put dimensions on it behind the 100 feet? Yeah, yeah I mean it. that, that's, you're just talking from the 100 in it, so I think we can yeah. stipulate No, the driveway stops at 100 feet. Yeah, right. And then it walk. turns to six feet. Yeah. But I do, I do think it, it, it pays to have a dimensional width to it. Otherwise, can we do that beyond 100? Pardon me? Beyond 100 feet, we can't do that. Yes, we can. Why is that? Uh, because we need to approve a specific project. Uh, and if we don't put a dimension on it, they could build a driveway 30 feet wide and there's nothing we could do about it. Um, within yes. 100 feet. It's going to be a six foot path. Right. Yeah. What happens past that, they can pave out the right of way to the road, can they? Yeah. Yeah, they, they could pave all the way to the road, but the, the issue is if we don't put a, um, a, width, a width on there and they build it 50 feet wide all the way out to the road, or, they could be creating a situation where. Uh, you violate the uh, lot coverage standard, and we would never know about it. So no one would be violating the lot coverage standard. Twenty percent uh, rule, you mean? Pardon me. The twenty percent rule. Yeah, the yeah lot cover twenty percent rule. Yeah. Well, they can't do that. Those rules are in play, um, and they're way under it. I I, I know. I'm not in the putting all these restrictions in more than are necessary. Um, once this is out of our hands, they can do whatever they can. Beyond 100 feet, she has 20% of a block, which is um, so 40 and 20, 60. That's... But the applicant has uh, actually on their application said it's going to be 30 feet wide. Yeah. So we can't approve something different than what the application said. Right. Okay, so going back here then. So driveway is approved with the following. You want to change 10 feet to 6 feet. So uh, uh, below dimensions. Uh, how you call it? Below the 100 foot mark? Or that sound? Within. 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 Walkway. And beyond the hundred foot mark will be no no wider than ten feet. Ten feet, yeah. Ten feet, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wider. You sure that's the width you want? Because you can go wider. <laughs> that's why I don't like this restriction right. idea. Yeah. I am still busy, and I just uh, kind of went with the way the driveway came in now. So because ten feet is pretty narrow. That's it is. Time. When you go fifteen, you say it that way. You don't have to go fifteen, but you, you know, it don't limit yourself. If yet. it's okay to change it at this point, I you have to. You can initial or change it and initial. Oh, no. Thank so you, you for bringing that out because sure. it just kind of went with the pathway that we've been 
for using to get to the front. So you want us to put in the conditions of 15? 15. That would be great. Thank okay. you. Sammy would like that better. Pardon? Sammy has to do the plowing, right? Well, we probably won't be plowing it's only seasonal. But it's nice to be able to get down to the camp without right. tracing through the right. mucky grass. And, okay. Yeah. So on the original one, they'll have to change the witness for your election. Okay. And the date. Excellent. And I did understand it correctly. It can be behaviors than that 16 from the, Okay. So driveway is approved with the following dimensions. Within the 10 feet, feet mark, the walkway will be no wider than, than 100, 100 foot mark. With, 100. Within the 100 foot mark. Oh, I thought you said You said yeah. I did on the yeah. <laughs> You know, it's 730. <laughs> within the 100 foot mark, the walkway will be not wider than six feet. And beyond the 100 foot mark, the walkway will be not wider than 50 feet. All right. So any other conditions of approval? Oh, you mentioned the standard condition. Uh, yeah. right. Standard condition, just to explain it, is on your addition with a roof line, uh, the drip line from your roof, if you could dig down four to six inches and fill up full of crushed stone and it just seeps in. Yes. And if you wanted to go a step above, you could do all the drip line, but you're not required to, but you're not required to do the new addition. A little too long. I'll, I'll put it around. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. So, Besides, uh, based on the above finding of fact and conclusions on law on 9-21-2023, the town of Belgrade planning board approved by the vote of. So we're going to vote on the entire application. So uh, there have to be a motion to approve the entire application and a second. I make a motion to approve. The application with the mentioned conditions. And second. So we any discussion? No. So we're going to vote, Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Sakara. Yes. Mr. Sergeant. I just want to make sure you guys were awake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Miss Erin gave we. I say yes too. So it's five in favor. No one opposed. Five, well, five, the short land permit application of uh, Carla Casey. Gary. Yeah. Gary, okay. That's, I'm going to fix this here then. It's scary. I, we got Casey here and uh, I fix it up. Gary. Sorry about that. You were straight here. <laughs> <laughs> with, thank you. With the above conditions and at the meeting of 921, 2023, uh, developed with the written, uh, written findings of facts and conclusions of law on remand of the Belgrade Board of Appeals and adopted uh, these findings of nine. 21, 2023. So you are officially approved. And uh, so uh, we need to do some changes on the application that, that she needs to sign off on them. I think we're gonna do this a little better. Let's go. So, uh, so we we are supposed to scratch up these numbers here, I guess. Uh, just okay. change the ten to fifteen and have our initial one. And to the on the driveway. On the driveway. Walkway. And so. Um. Uh, Oh, question five. 
when it's still by the end of it. Yeah. it then, and so, so can you come, in, come up here and show it? And then show that. Um, so I'm going to refill this over here and this over here. And uh, I think everything else was fine. And this over here, like that, too. So, this initial, like there, and there, and here. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah, it's dynamic. I know. Uh, <laughs> been a while. Had more tablings and uh, signs. <laughs> and we'll say this. Yeah. So, congratulations on your first. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's me. Do um, we have to place the, with the conditions here too? Two conditions, sir? Uh, they need it? No, I mean, because the finding of facts goes with the application. Okay. Stay together. So, should we check, look at final facts? Yes. yes, in accordance with the final facts. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, um, I guess I have to be in touch with you uh, for the permit and uh, good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Yeah. You need to do what I think, right? But yeah, I'm going to say how you guys are. Okay. I want to use the same people. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, we'll move to. And you got an antique boat sale, right? <laughs> so we move on to all business. And in that, we're going to review uh, the four minutes of 9 7. And then also. Uh, the minutes from the um, um, uh, yeah the uh, site visit for Mr. Mr. John Slosher. What was the date on that one? It was um uh, eight twenty four or something like that? Eight seventeen. Eight seventeen. Yeah, site visit was conducted on August 24th. Thank you.
So we're ready to uh, approve. Uh, let's start with the minutes of A24. I'm just having one. On the table, is it? Kind of very, yeah. It's a, it's a uh, comedy question, so to speak. Okay. Uh, on the last uh, paragraph, is that a French line or a French drain? Um, uh, um, I think it's supposed to be a French drain. Is it French drain? That's what he was calling it. Okay, so it will be French drain. I really don't know the difference. But yeah, that's, it was my mind, my mind was French mind. No big deal. I knew what you meant. Yeah. It was one, I know a French drain and I know a trench mine, but I didn't know a, a French mine. So I. Interesting. Joke of it. <laughs> that's, a, that's all I had here, sir. Thank you. So, on that particular um, minutes, are we ready to vote? And uh, Zakara was not spelled correctly. Mm -hmm. Put that in the front I'm so sorry about that. So Zakara should be spelled S A Z Z R O. No, no sorry. Z A C C A R O. I didn't see where it was misspelled though. I put two two R's in there oh, two, R's. two C's. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. Z A Z Z A R O Z A C C A R O. Yeah, two yes. C's, one R. Yes. Any other changes to this minute? Okay. Yeah. So I will entertain a motion and second to approve this minute. Yes, yes. I have a vote in favor. Oh, you need a motion. Yeah, I need a motion. I make a motion we approve the minutes as amended uh, from the August 24th cycle. Second. Oh, actually, I wasn't at the cycle. Maybe somebody else did uh, make the motion. I make a motion we accept the minutes from the August 24th cycle as, as amended. All right, I need a second. Uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Scarl, second then. Uh, any discussions, any further discussion? I don't hear anybody, so let's vote then. Mrs. Sakara? Yes. Mr. Sergeant? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. And Ms. Arangue is four in favor, no, non opposed, to approve the minutes of A24 23 for the site visit to uh, disclosure application. That's done. Are we ready to approve uh, September 7th minutes? Any changes to that, those minutes, Mr. Baker? Two comments. Uh, Celine Richards was also at that meeting. Uh, so we're person, in-person attendees. Mm -hmm. uh, we should add Celine to that. So Celine Richards must be added to the in-person attendees. And on the discussion, uh, on Mr. Slocker's uh, uh, application, second line says the owner agreed to move the footprint back to the 20 foot line. I think that should be 25 foot line. Um, yeah. I think that was the case, yes. 20 foot. That's, a, that's all I had. Good catch. Any other changes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I want to take a motion to approve the minutes of September 7th. Here's the motion that we approve the minutes, uh, the 
minutes from the meeting of September 7th. Okay. A second. Yeah, I second it. Thank you. So I have a, a, a motion and a second. So let's vote, Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Sakhar. Yes. Mr. Sergis. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Mr. Rowling is five in favor, no opposed. So the minutes of September 7th are approved. Um, next item in the agenda is uh, CEO comments. All right, we got an um, email from KB Cog about the um, LG 2003 grant funding for them. They've been notified that they will receive funding. They don't know how much yet or when it will come. So that's the way to set up KB Cog. All right, so you know, I thought we mentioned the, the the concept of uh, that you've been getting phone calls with a for um that is related to the same thing. Um that was just letting you know. Okay. People are waiting, confident at the bit to do something. Okay. And already asking questions. All right. So, um, so uh, as part of that, this process here too, um, I think we can talk after the agenda, after the meeting is done. Or should we talk about the agenda for next? You can set the agenda now, right now, what you'd like to be on there. So we, we have a list of items on that. So next time, you, how many applications you expect that we'll have next time? That two. Two. So uh, let's add just one item from that list for the next. You write that, I don't have the list, so I don't know what it is. I, I do, I'll go right here, I'll get it after me. So for now, let's then, you guys, each one of you have a list of the contacts. Yes, yes. All right? And uh, also we have, a copy of uh, Craig's questions. Everybody read that, so yeah. we should be we should be good to send this uh, to a lawyer. From uh, to, or actually, we should be we're ready to have it uh, hands up to to uh, the town manager about it. No, you have your own legal budget. Planning planning board has its own legal budget. Okay. So when you. Decide with questions or how you how you want to ask or what you want to ask. We contact them. So we last meeting we agreed that both questions from the seal and this questions because this was initiated um by a uh, uh, a CEO question. Yeah, and Lorna is uh the you know the the person that um uh. To, to follow the proper channels. And Lorna is your boss that you should take these questions because you, we, you have our opinion on it already. And talk to Lorna and see what she wants to do. If she wants to take it to a select board, we will send it from there to the lawyers. And right. what, whatever that is decided, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I thought we would just send a list to lawyers. Directly from us? Yeah. That's the way it was all laid out right from the beginning. Right? I, That's why I spoke to Lorna today and she said, You got your own budget? The question for the attorney asked. So uh, that's what Lorna said. So. I haven't heard from her yet. So uh, I'd be happy to do that. I'd be content with that. Send the direct to lawyers if that's the case. Yeah. So, um, is there any discussion on what I have to add? Or? I have no problems with you, as this as it is. Right. So, yeah. so um, if Lorna said then that it was up to us to do that, she didn't, didn't need to uh, go and consult that with the select people, I'm good. But I think we all are good with it, is that? Yeah. We'll send it with us. Um, send it to us. coming from your committee. Yeah, sir. So um, uh, I will take care of that. Sounds good. So just one other question. What what's that budget for legal? Um, right now? Um, no idea. 
So I, I think there's a, a yearly fee and yeah. and uh, all the questions that we can ask with that suspension mm -hmm. yearly okay. fee. Yeah. So I understand. That's my understanding is that huh. the yeah. town has paid an upfront fee. I yeah. don't know if that's good for so many hours of their time or that's uh, unlimited, but. I mean, I mean, we were now. I can check into that. So. I think it's so much is put in every year and it builds up. But yeah, we come to Laura, she can clarify. Sounds great. So um, from there, then I, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, can I ask oh, a question first? A quite, procedural type question. Sure. Uh, we now have two alternates or whatever was termed under the ordinance, uh, uh, whatever. When, if we're missing one person, does the voting, is that based on seniority or do we take turns uh, the, the ability to vote? I look into that and suppose they, the chair had the choice on who, who's going to be picked. Oh, really? Uh, and I will have to consult that with Lorna. But um, um, in my my thinking, should be based on seniority. So if the two of you are here, it will be you. And if let's say uh, we're missing one and you're not here and she's here, then then it will be uh, Mrs. Uh, Morale. Yeah. So I. Uh, you're thinking ahead, I guess. Yeah. The uh, I uh, I actually read this from the. Uh, the town of Rome. Mm -hmm. That's the way they work with uh, uh, not necessarily with uh, this boy, but they follow the rule of order of uh, proper proper rules of order. So when there is a missing person in the board and in the budget committee, there when there's a person uh, missing, the in this two alternates, the way it goes is that the chair decide who's going to be the other. Whether I pick you one time and hurt the other, um, I think it will be more settled because then I have to remember who did it last time. Mm -hmm. You know, we we'll have to keep a track of that. Right. And how about we have a meeting where I'm not in? Mm -hmm. And so to to sell it, we'll go for seniority, I would say. Okay. And um, if one of you is missing, then the next person mm -hmm. is taking it. So unless the board wanted to do it different. I, I wanted to hear my first thought was so I said So if I'm missing or next year whoever is the, the president of the board or the, the chair of the board, we have already right. said that out. But we I don't think have you have an out two alternates before? No, never since I've been on the board and that's been ten or twelve years. So yeah, first time. So I did actually read into that. So. so when I was an alternate, there wasn't another alternate as well? When I, I, think, I think you were the only alternate. Uh, associate member is what we call now. Associate <laughs> member. <laughs> yeah, under our ordinances, it would say the associate member. Oh, really? Okay. Although everybody refers to it all. Right. So I'm going to know how to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second? I'll second that. So we vote Mr. Baker. Uh, yes. Mr. Sakara, would you yeah. see yeah. Mr. Sturgeon? No. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Alexander. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. You can and stay as long as you want. Yeah. <laughs> so what is more to We are German. Oh,